Inhumans episode 7 thoughts. This episode is called Havoc in the Hidden Land. Spoilers for everything MCU leading up to and including this episode. This show is rated TVPG, so will this video be? I finally feel the gaze of the Elder Gods leaving my forum. Let's dive right in. So, yeah, we have yet another fight scene that is not super impressive. And then we get I, I really, it will never cease to amaze me what this show does to try to make Max evil. The royal family are talking about how <gasps> Max is going to go through Terra Genesis a second time? Like, that's just evil I, you know it's it's not evil to try to prevent someone from doing that sort of thing considering it hurts no one it's evil to do it you know yes 100 percent it was wrong of him to to murder the genetic council but again he did give them the choice to to go along with it. it's not like he just immediately went for the jugular as it were and finally she transitions back from Medusa to Medusa, and yeah, there's there's some much needed character growth. I think it's too little, too late, and I'm not convinced by it. But I'll take anything at this point. Um, yeah, she talks about we cannot just kill all of them, and let's see. Yeah, they they suggest a parlay, and then there's this discussion between the royal family members of if it is truly going to be an act of diplomacy and Triton is back which I'm mostly just glad because I like Mike Mo um, that's pretty much I, I don't really care that much about this this character I I'm not 100 percent no honestly yeah I kinda I kinda forgot he was even in this like the just yeah and and again like the show acts like wow isn't this amazing like I get that part of the audience for this show are people who love the comics and I can imagine I I don't think I've ever read any Inhumans comics I can imagine there Triton is you know yeah an excellent character but if you're gonna do this sort of thing you kinda have to within the piece of of media itself set up yeah this is uh, you know this is someone we really care about I, I barely remember anything about him like I know let's see he was one of the first characters we met he he tried to save the the new and human at the start of episode one and then he was attacked and yeah for a while we thought he was dead like I barely know anything about him at all the show hasn't really told me enough to get me to care and let's see yeah we we you know we start seeing these the the what's the word um there are yeah uh, uh black bolt takes them to this like what's it what's it called um this this bunker uh, you know and and yeah uh, you know dr declan is like you know completely overwhelmed and you know karnak drops the the killer line am i going to have to catch you up a lot or can you keep up seriously that movie was not as bad as i thought it was going to be and yeah you know i appreciate M medusa actually talking about you know you can't keep these secrets from us and yeah you know finally we seem to like be getting this confrontation of how evil this kingdom is and the fact that black bolt was the king for for a lot of this you know but of course she has to to completely ruin it by saying i am the queen you know so so that's what it is really it's not that people in general shouldn't be lied to it's that how dare you lie to another to, to, to someone who's supposed to be almost equal to you in the in the royal yeah 
and they are still treating Dr. Declan badly, you know, even, like, in a later, later scene, Crystal does start talking about, oh, you know, I thought humans were terrible, but they're not so bad, you know, which, again, like, that's important character growth, but it should have happened so much sooner. Like, for most of this show, we've been saddled with these just utterly terrible characters that just constantly treat the people around them badly and act like they're superior. You know, that... In some ways, this reminds me of Gladiator. You have this person with a lot, with very high status, having everything taken away from them and being reduced to, to being amongst people that he used to, you know, feel like he was above. But in that movie, Russell Crowe is not acting, is not constantly going around saying, you are all beneath me, you know, just, yeah. Let's see. Yeah, and they, Auron and Max have this conversation about motivation, and apparently the things she liked, yeah, I it's just, the audience is supposed to take away here. He's evil because he's doing the right thing for the wrong reason. Well, I, you know, the show does not think it's the right thing for for the, at, at the very least, not if Max is the one doing it. It's it's that thing of, you know, evil is defined not by what you do, but by who's doing it. Evil people can only do evil. Good people can only do good, which is just not how it is in reality. And it makes for very boring fiction a lot of the time. You know, I, I was going to say some stories for kids, but honestly, a lot of the, the best, like, look at, like, Disney and Pixar, you know, in those you do see sometimes the good good people characters will, you know, do something evil and, and will understand why, and that can help prepare kids for, you know, sometimes good people do evil things. If there is such a thing as good people and evil people. But, but yeah, you know, look, at the end of the day, the right thing done for the wrong reason is still the right thing. You know, on the other hand, we have the royal family who've been doing the wrong thing, and they tell themselves that they're doing it for the right reason. You know, they justify their evil actions, but when Max is trying to, to do something good, but yeah. And and we again see his his pain, his trauma, you know, this thing of everywhere he goes, you know, ever since Terragenesis, everyone pities him. You know, he, he honestly, like, if just... He is probably the one character on this show that I actually kind of find engaging. I just wish that they... Like, they, they're gonna have to either push it much further for me to buy that he's evil, or he should just have been, like, an anti-hero. Like, maybe a reluctant ally of the good guys or something. But the fact that the villain really isn't that villainous whilst the heroes are just monster, like, literally eugenicists. Just, yeah. And there was a little bit of tension during the, the parlay, I will say. And let's see. the Yeah, we have this thing of, you know, yeah, they, they seem to really be trying to find common ground, at least some of them. But but yeah, he, he does not give them the throne back. You know, it's that, it's that classic mistake of, you know, the good guys trust the bad guy enough that they give up the thing that they have before making sure he's also giving up the thing he has. Which, yeah, actually just kind of makes them look very, very naive. Like, which is consistent with their characters up to this point. Just like, why wouldn't you just, like, literally all you have to do is, is, you know, yeah, he, give, he gives up the throne, and then you, you know, at that point, you give him back Dr. Declan. And, and yeah, once Declan and Max are talking, you know, we get this thing of, 
you know, oh, Max is going to try to choose his Terra Genesis powers. See? You see how evil he is? He's trying to exercise freedom. I, in a monarchy? Really? Like, this is not at all what the eugenicists that created this, you know, caste system would at all want. Like, he is, this just is unacceptable. And I really hope they stop him. And, let's see. Yeah, and, and then they talk about, let's see, is this... Yeah, I, I forget exactly what it is, but there's something that, you know, oh, the, that has never occurred. Oh, like, a good episode of this show. And and then we have this thing of, you know, oh, where are the where are the people who should be dealing with this problem? You conscripted them, remember? Ah, uh, see? If you take people and, and try to get them to do a good thing, they're not going to be doing the thing that they were forced into doing before. You got to think about these things, Max. Do you realize that you are just completely splitting apart this, like, dictatorship? Like, how is this supposed to... Like, yes, I get it. I, I, you know, they're kind of going for a thing of, like, Scarlet Pimpernel, you know, the the... You need someone to scrub the toilets, but you know that thing was actually bringing depth to this way too black and white. Like one hundred percent, I appreciate that. You know, a a the French Revolution or something similar to it was basically necessary. Like the the royal family were not at all taking care of the needs of the people. Like people were literally starving to death. But the the I forget what it's called, but the, yeah, the immediate aftermath of the, or the revolution stuff, whatever, went way too far. They were literally executing children for, you know, having been born to, to royalty, and in comes the Scarlet Pimpernel, and, and, you know, trying to, yeah, fight back against that, trying to save children from being murdered for their bloodline, you know, and, yeah, you know, there is that thing about, it, you know, essentially, it is impossible to make absolutely everyone 100% equal. You are going to have some that are going to have to have jobs that they might not want, but you have to do. But the way to, you know, address that issue, as communism does, perhaps not all strains, but a number of strains of communism do, is to, to make sure that the people who have, you know, very little and who are forced to, yeah, who ultimately have to do jobs that they might not want, have, you know, they're, they're paid well, they, they get a good pension, they don't have to work un until they're just completely devastated, you know, these sorts of things. And, and then you have this show, which is just like, well, you know, if we don't force people to do the, the thing that, you know, then no one is going to do it under any circumstances, and then suddenly, you know, important things don't get done. Like, if this show had been made 50 years, honestly, no, I think 60. I think we'd have to go 60 years back. So let's see, what would that make in 1957? Yeah, then I'd be like, okay, you know, I still don't like the politics, but at least I can appreciate this is how some, you know, there was a lot of hostility towards communism at the time. But in 2017, these politics, like, just, yeah. And, let's see. Yeah, um... She is, right, she is right now Medusa. In the past, she was Medusa. She showed up to gloat. She was there to make him feel worse about his parents' death. Just, yeah. And let's see. But I do appreciate this point about, you know, two people sharing one pain. And, yeah, they talk about how, you know, 
the reason no one does second Terry Genesis is because of these old fairy tales about, you know, oh, you know, terrible things will happen. Which I, I quite, you know, they even, like, this does actually feel like it's it's tailored to suit. Because they say, you know, it's, I think, at least one of them is like, oh, you could go mad from it. You know, I it was one of them, like, death, or so, you know, stuff like that, you know. So, yeah, these are the kinds of things that would sometimes be said of, like, if, you know, if you treat this minority well... It will lead to madness and death. It, you know, the people will start doing things that are not okay, and and people will die on on account of it. You know, something that has been used to to scare people away from you know actually good things because they weren't currently being done throughout human history. So that I do appreciate and. Yeah, so Karnak and Auron somewhat work together, although she says, I'll flee, but I will not flee with you. And, yeah, you know, maybe Gorgon is coming back, and, you know, seemingly not. But, uh, yeah, so they, they have this conversation about, you know, maybe death is not something to be avoided, but, you know, which I appreciate. And I do like that they have this little moment, because it's Auron saying it, and, and it's this thing of, just as she's saying it, it's hitting her. It's for real, like she's realizing maybe it's wrong that I've been trying to resurrect my, or that I've been resurrecting myself all these times, you know. And I do think, I, I, I am 100%, I, I don't think that it's a good thing. The, the hypothetical, you know, currently it's not even possible, but I don't, think that it would be good if the the you know if we human beings were able to live forever i think th a lot of what makes life beautiful is and i do think it is is that it is temporary you know let's see you know with with that said obviously like if you're currently dealing with something that will kill you at a very young age, I 100% understand, like, you know, thinking, like, oh, it would be wonderful if I could live forever, and, you know, certainly we should be curing things that, that kill people at a very young age and, and stuff like that. Now, let's see... You know, Dr. Denkland, if you're going to point out the the kind of mid production design and and you know production value this is not going to work out in the long run you know he's like it's lo it looks just like a phone booth and you know max is like it's far more than a phone booth besides which it's much bigger on the inside and it can time travel it does look like a phone booth though but yeah the the yeah, honestly, the this thing of I I've I already forgot what it was, but they they said that there's a thing that's happening, and you know, like, yeah, uh, Max is like running, and there's guards with him. That was actually you know slightly effective tension, and it was very cool when when Triton attacked, you know, and let's see. But yeah, um, you know, the the action is not very good as as per usual. And and yeah, at the very end we we you know, we find out you know, Max set up a dead man's switch which kind of just makes me wish I was watching Dread, the the 2012 movie. And in the post credit scene, Gorgon returns, although I I guess we're, I mean, there's this sort of tension around, may, maybe he's, like, out of control now, because there, there was a, a sort of sinister, thing, not left-handed, but the other meaning of that word kind of thing to it. So, yeah, honest, I, I was about to say, you know, uh, really, after all that, you're still just going to bring it back. 
maybe they are trying to do a thing of like, oh, you really should not bring people back, kind of pet cemetery zombie kind of thing. So, yeah, here's here's hoping, here's worrying. My hopes will be dashed against the rocks, and I will finish the show tomorrow.